So this week, Rishi Sunak has been entertaining Ukrainian President Zelensky for what appears to be essentially a glorified photo shoot in a load of army fatigues. What, of course, has happened in the meantime is that he's promised him a stack more very serious weapons to support him in his war effort. And the media response has been whooping and cheering, as far as I can tell, and republishing the photos, often along with these sort of like top Trump style breakdowns of what these weapons can do, range, fuel used, potential impact, as though it's some sort of children's, you know, card game. What the media is not talking about is things like the fact that we're now at about five billion pounds worth of weapons that we've given to Ukraine. That's enough to fund half of a 15 percent NHS pay rise across the board. And in fact, let's dig in a little bit further. It's actually much more than that we could do with five billion because 81 percent of NHS pay rises actually come straight back into our economy, right? We suddenly need to spend less in the NHS hiring agency staff to cover gaps. We suddenly have less people suing the NHS because they didn't get the treatment that they needed or they were unable to get it in time or they needed more expensive treatment because they were kept waiting for so long. We'd have less gaps in our service. Plus, when you give people who work for the NHS more money, guess what? They claim less benefits and they spend more money in our economy because they have more disposable income. They buy things, restaurant meals, coffees, works of art, tickets for comedy shows, furniture, all the things that as they buy them, that money goes back into our economy and it cycles round and round again and they pay tax as they earn and the people who get the next round of that pay tax on their earnings too. So in actual fact, we could probably use this money to fund NHS pay rises at 15% for several years when you look at the facts of it. But what do they think they're doing anyway, giving a tonne of weapons to Ukraine? What, that Putin's going to look around and go, oh, you've got a lot of weapons there, perhaps I'll stop bothering. They're going to kill a load of Russian soldiers and Putin's going to go, oh no, I don't want anyone, any more Russians getting hurt. Nobody believes that that is really what's going on. The only way to end this war is to de-escalate and to start peace talks. And you can argue that Putin won't attend peace talks, but that's a pointless argument when there aren't any peace talks. We're not setting up peace talks and we're not sat around a table for peace talks and we're not asking Zelensky to attend peace talks. So whether Putin would or wouldn't show up is by the by. We need to set up those peace talks and we need to tell Putin that we're going to listen to what he says, not do all of it, not go along with it, but we're going to listen and try to negotiate one way or another because that's the only way that war can end. The most frightening thing about all this that, again, the media hasn't even touched on as far as I can see, is that as of last month, we've been sending Ukraine weapons that use depleted uranium. Now, you might recognise that term because that is the material which is widely credited with having caused what we call Gulf War Syndrome, thousands of soldiers coming back from the war in Iraq with mysterious and unexplained medical conditions. And the US government did some research about it and they decided with the research that they'd funded that there definitely wasn't a problem and everything was fine. But the British Medical Journal is not so sure. And in particular, they believe that there might be lots of people in Iraq who are now in experiencing increased rates of cancer and birth defects because of ongoing environmental exposure to depleted uranium. Incidentally, don't be fooled by the word depleted. It's about 40 percent less radioactive than normal uranium. You know, normal uranium like you'd have sitting around in your house in a potpourri bowl or something. Of course you wouldn't. You know that uranium is incredibly dangerous. And 40% less radioactive. I mean, I'm sorry, but that's like smoking Marlboro Lights and thinking that it's not going to be bad for your health. No, it's still incredibly dangerous. And in fact, the US military themselves say that depleted uranium weapons should only be used against armoured vehicles and never against civilians. And they say, as long as it's not ingested, it should be all right. But if you were to breathe it in or consume it some way, then that would be dangerous. But of course, when you drop weapons like this with radioactive isotopes in that last for years and years and years and years and years, it is inevitable that it gets into the food system, that it gets into the water supply and that its impact goes on for generation after generation after generation. And I see Sunak and Zelensky wandering around, posing for photographs and hugging each other and all this kind of stuff and trying to look cool. And I think it's about time we remembered that being on the ground when a war is going on and watching hospitals, schools, housing being knocked to the ground, seeing family members and loved ones killed, maimed, injured, and knowing that for generations to come, 
you're likely to be at increased risk of having family members with cancer, with birth defects, with all that kind of stuff. There is absolutely nothing cool about that. And we need to start looking for a different approach. See you next week. Increasingly, the mainstream media is terrible at informing the public of what is really going on. I'm only able to make these videos because people are generous enough to sponsor me making them. And if you're able to be a part of that, I would hugely appreciate it. It can cost as little as $1 a month and you'll get loads of fun bonus content and lots of extras from me and my undying gratitude. I also massively appreciate it if you're able to like, share these videos and let people out there know what's going on.